what's going on here? Now, what I'm going to suggest is you can solve this question exactly the same way we solve this question, but it's going to be hard. Doing it by cases is going to be very difficult. Just think for a second, why? Why is it going to be so difficult? Okay? Celine, you want to suggest? Okay, when I think about cases, it was so nice and simple to say, well, this thing only has two versions, so therefore the whole thing only has two versions. This time I'm going to have more. Surprisingly though, you don't actually have four versions, even though each can have two. Let me show you why. Have a look at this. We just dealt with this. It's the same one. Do you notice that? Okay. So this is one of two things based on where does it change? Where does it switch over? On there. Negative one. Okay. So there's a version of this to the left of negative one, and then there's a version of this to the right of negative one. Do you agree? Okay. How about this one? Where does this guy switch over? Can you work it out without writing it all down? It's going to switch over at two. You're starting to see the pattern. Aren't you? You're like, oh, that turns into negative one. Okay. So there's a version of this when x is less than two, and then there's another version of this when x is greater than two. Do you agree? Okay, so think about this, right? If I'm x is less than negative one, right? I'm gonna have the left version of this. Which version of this am I gonna have? I'm gonna have the left version, right? The left version and the left version. I'm just going to write left, left. Okay. Then I cross over. I pass by a negative 1. What happens to this guy? It switches over to become the right version. But say I was like at x equals 0. Yeah? What about this one? Which version am I using right now? I'm still using the left version. I haven't passed by 2. So he hasn't changed. Do you agree? And then lastly, I will pass by x equals 2. This one was already switched over to the white version. And then this guy joins him. So there are actually three different portions, branches, to this graph. Okay? We're going to draw it. So, get a set of axes there. This time, make it decently sized. Definitely bigger than this. Unlike this guy over here, do you notice I am not drawing the bottom of this graph? My question to you is, how did I know this one wouldn't need the bottom, whereas I looked over here and I thought, hmm, I think I will. What do you reckon? What's the clue in the question? Yeah, Shane. Aha! So, see that guy there? Right? You're adding things, and importantly, this is going to be positive, and so is this. You add two positive things, I don't care which positive things they are, they will stay positive. On the other hand, er, this guy over here has no problems with being negative, okay? And eventually he is. So that's why look carefully before you start to draw your axes and make a judgment. All right, so now I'm gonna have a look. I'm gonna say negative one and then two. Okay. Now, there are two ways that we can approach this and right now I'm just gonna show you one because otherwise your brains will melt as if it weren't hot enough already. And uh, it'll be quite confusing and you'll, you'll mix and cross your wires, okay? So I'm going to do this now that I know, I'm gonna do this with these cases, now that I know what's what, okay? So I'm gonna say, when x is uh, less than negative one, okay? Do you remember how I had my versions set up here? Okay, so when x is less than negative one, I've got the left version of this and the left version of that. What is the left version of this? If it's negative. I think it's this, isn't it? That's the negative part to the left when you're thinking about x's is negative. Okay. And then I need the negative, the left version of this, which is minus that. Do you agree? That's what I'm going to have. Let's just simplify that. That is minus x minus 1 minus x plus 2. Yes? Can you collect like terms for me? Minus 2x plus 1. Okay. So over here, that's what I'm going to get. Minus 2x plus 1. Just hold that in your mind. Okay. Alright, what about 
in between negative 1 and 2. What's going to happen? Do I have the negative version of this or the positive version? Ooh, he switched over. Did you notice that? So I can write just regular old x plus 1. But I've still got the negative version of this, don't I? He hasn't, he hasn't switched over yet. Okay? So I'm going to write minus x minus 2. Here. Expand. And out pops. Just three, right? Good. Brains are still functioning. They haven't overheated. That's a plus. Okay. The x's cancel. The numbers come together. Now we've got our last one. When x is greater than two. Now at last, everything is just the positive version, the right version. Okay. So I'm going to say y equals x plus one plus x minus two. Are you happy with that? Which, by the way, doesn't it look suspicious. Got a connection? Those two guys, right? They are exact opposites of each other. Of course they are, because look, you went from left left to right right. That's the negative versions of both, the positive versions of both. No surprise they're exactly opposite. Okay? So now we're gonna draw it. And again, you might look at this next pit that I'm doing and you'll be like, well, oh, that's a bit weird. How do you get that? Wait until next week and I will show you in period zero what the other method is. For reasons that are currently inscrutable, I'm gonna draw the middle section first. What do you think of my graph? Does it look good? Yeah. Pretty accurate? It's just the horizontal line, y equals 3. Okay, so that's it. Now I'm going to do the left side. Tell me what you know about this gradient. It's going to be dropping quite steeply, isn't it? Where is it supposed to hit the uh, y-axis? At 1. Right? It's meant to hit here. It never gets there, does it, because of the domain. If I track back a little bit, like rise over run this way, you're actually going to intersect, aren't you? you agree with that? This is y equals minus 2x plus 1. If I had kept it going, it would hit the plus 1 over there. Okay? And finishing off this is exactly the opposite. Like that. y equals 2x minus 1. And you're done. I can now pose to you any question I like in terms of an inequality, like when is this thing uh, less than or equal to 5, okay? And you can draw your 5 line, you could solve simultaneously, find the points of intersection, and give me the domain if we had time for it, okay? This is pretty tricky though, like messing about with this, looking at all the different cases, it was quite a long time to work out what on earth was going on, which is why on Monday morning, I'll show you a slightly quicker way of doing it that's conceptually better, but it takes a bit more brain work and a lower temperature to actually make sure you understand.